When you're ready to create a die line in Adobe InDesign, whether that's to create the custom die line for the cut, the perf, and the scoring, or the folding, or you just want to do a cool custom fold that's a rectangle piece that you need to identify where the folds are, you're going to follow the same steps. First, create a new spot color on your swatches panel and rename it die line. It doesn't really matter what the color is, and so usually you'll choose a color that's in contrast to what the colors in your design are. However, the company that I worked at, we had specific colors that we used. And so if you're working with a, a commercial printer and they tell you that they want all dye lines to be magenta, then just make them magenta for them. Then you're going to create a new layer and you're going to name it dye line. I recommend that you move it to the top of your layers panel for multiple reasons. Um, we'll explain those as we go. Then use the paint pen tool to create a path identifying where your project will cut, use straight lines for that, to fold and or score, use dashed lines for that, and to perforate if applicable, and you're going to use dotted lines for that. You want to use a one point or thinner stroke, and it's recommended that you use what's called hairline. I don't think that hairline exists in InDesign anymore, and so if you wanted to make hairline, it's 0.25 points. Make sure that all the dye line paths that you've created are all on the dye line layer using the dye line spot color. I recommend creating continuous paths, so if you're making the shape of the outside that cuts, make sure that it's continuous and that all of the anchor points are joined so that you have one cut shape and you don't have a bunch of individual ones. And then last but not least, do not use your die line layer or your die line spot color anywhere else in your project. So once you've created your die line, lock that layer so you can't add anything to it by accident. And then also do not use the dye line color. If you make it like a bright orange color and then you think, oh, I really like that orange color. I want to use orange in my project. You cannot use the dye line spot color. You must make a second orange color that will be used in your project. Once you've created your dye line, it's on your dye line layer using your dye line spot color, you need to make sure that the stroke itself or the path that you've created is set to be an overprint via the attributes panel. If you leave it as is, it's vector art, and vector art by default is a knockout. And when we print a knockout, we leave a hole underneath whatever we're printing so that the color that we're printing hits unprinted paper. That's bad for a die line because we're not going to print the die line along with the rest of the artwork. And I, when I print the artwork on a press sheet, on a printing press, I don't want to have to have a big white line everywhere the die line was. I want it to just print all across under it so that you don't even know there's a die line. And then separately, we'll output the die line file and make a die, the thing that's going to stamp down and cut or score your product. And it will line up with your registration marks and then just cut where it's supposed to. If you set it to be an overprint, it will allow the artwork to print under and the, the die line to print over the artwork. So don't leave it as a knockout. Um, step five, check your die line via the separations preview panel to make sure that it's set as an overprint. If you turn your die line spot color off and you see a white line everywhere the die line was, it's still set to be a knockout. And then last but not least, if you haven't already done so, lock your die line layer so that you don't accidentally add other artwork to it. Keeping it as a separate layer allows us to turn that layer on and off if we're designing and we don't want to see the die line at that particular moment in time.